Okay, I'm back. Well, here's a sheetrock I'm using today. I said 28 by 28, but I figured I didn't have 28 by 20. Well, I got the 28, but I got 26 right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the 26 by 28. I don't have time to run Home Depot. And the, see, here's the tool I'm gonna use to cut it because my hand hurts. Normally, you can use this, put pressure all the way down. Tape measure, your putty knife to put the mud on. Put your mud on right here. They also sell a fast drying mud. Well, they call it, what is it? A sheet, sheet rock compound joint application. But I call it mud. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people do. So you just add water to this, but this, you have to be careful when you use it because it dries super quick. I like using this. Because when you use a regular compound, the stuff, the stuff takes forever to dry. So I like to get the job done quick and get out. But sometimes I, I do have to use it. Then, then of course, after your compound's dry, your joint compound's dry, you can use your drywall plaster sanding because you want to sand the compound after it dries because it look nice. I'll show you when I get to that step. And of course, after you're done with everything, you're paint. So I'm doing, I'm doing a ceiling on a porch. So I got some ceiling paint and it's white. And to put the paint on, you need your little roller. <laughs> or you got some paint brushes, some paint brushes, or what have you. So now I'm gonna do my cut for the for the ceiling. So here I go. drop piece right here but the piece I'm going to use is right here put this back in the bag so this is a piece I'm going to use in the ceiling see the reason why you don't want to cut the hole in advance to put this in. I'm gonna show you why in a second. So I'm gonna walk back to the hole and show you how I do it. So bear with me please. Okay I'm back. The reason why I don't cut my hole first before I you know have this is because I found out it's more better to do it this way. I took the cover off the light as well. So you put this where you're gonna put it. So I'm gonna put mine, I'm gonna put it right here. See like that. That's, how, that's where it's gonna go. Uh, so now you mark it. See, now I got a cutting mark right here on top, right here. That's where I'm gonna cut. But I got this little lip right here where this brick is. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this line this way, probably maybe a quarter inch. I'm gonna dig it all out first. Then whatever, I can move it this way, half inch, quarter inch, whatever, what have you. So, what you want to do is you're going to have to do your cutting, take it all apart. 
So for this, you need another tube. I left it in the truck. So I shall return, I'll go get it, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, here we go. You need a drill. That's my screwdriver drill. Put in your sheetrock screws. You hang up the sheetrock. Then you got your cu your cutter, sheetrock cutter. Cut your hole out with this. That's that's what I use. But I also have a drill here with a bit on it to mix holes. The reason I, I I like to use this get my hole started for my cutter. I love this cutter. I mean, you cut tree branches. Check out the blades on that. You cut tree branches and everything. A nice handle at Home Depot. That's where I shop. Okay, now I'm going to drill a hole for a starting point for my cutter. A lot of guys probably do it a different way, forcing it in there or, or what have you, but not me. So you want to you want to drill a hole on this side where the hole is because you don't want to have a hole this way because your sheetrock's going to come here. So, I drill a couple holes. One, two, three. Oh, let me see. See, now you have enough room to put your blade in there and you can do it, follow your cut. See, now you just follow the line, come, but when you get to this point here, you're going to have to turn it and cut it this way. So, you have to be on this side of the line again. So, I'm going to be on this side of the line. wood right here there's a beam right here so we come up here this way so the beam is what inch and a half so come this way about an inch and a half or so Whoop, too close to the line see there we go there we go messy so uh, now I now I can start cutting it out fairly easy you can do it yourself instead of hiring somebody save you save you some money so what you do is get your cutter now I'm gonna follow the line here set my ladder or it's more comfortable for me Start to cut. There we go. here as well but it's nowhere in my line because I've been up in the attic working up there for the last couple days so I know there's no electricity where my cut is so before you ever cut like I'm doing here you have to make sure there's no electricity in the way because if you cut through it you're gonna have a big surprise I promise you I mean, you can tell if you're hitting something with this anyway because You'll, you'll hit something. You can tell it by how, how it feels. Okay, now we're going to go this way. 
Oh, there's my book, wood in the way. So, we have come this way, until I get the wood. See, and just go at an angle, like so. See, one at an angle. So, the sheet rock's all cut. Now we're gonna go that way. So, move the ladder where you're com most comfortable. Like so. Okay, here we go. Now we go that way, all the way. This whole area right here, kind of one piece in one piece, because I can mark the same hole on the sheetrock. So I'm gonna come this way here, because I hit the wood here. So you want to come far from here, because you don't damage it. So we come right here. <laughs> See if we got a hurt hand. I'm hitting some wood. So if you're hitting wood, you go at an angle. Okay, see it's coming off right there. Good. I already cut it here. So I'm gonna cut it across this being this way. Cause I, I want the same piece. One piece. Cause I wanna I have to cut my hole for that light. So I'm gonna come this way. There's a lot of wood here in this little area. But the reason why they put this light this light here, they need to attach it to some wood anyway. The electrical wire as well. Okay. Now you try to bring this down. You want to bring it down without breaking it. So let's see, but there's some. There's some here so it's gonna be kind of hard. Ooh, see it's breaking already. Oh well, I broke my little thing but it's okay watch that's still salvageable. Okay six so, I'll try to do pretty much is go like this put it back together. It would have been nice if I would have got it all in one piece though. So, you tear off all the parts, all the sheet rock. Because when you put your piece up there, it's going to have to fit. Oh, that's just great. Boy, that beams all the way across this one. That's a drag. Oh, oh I know what it is. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh. Oh. So 
So I'm gonna get my drill, make a couple holes. This one corner, so I can get a good cut. Follow the line. You should have safety glasses on because this stuff gets in your eyes, it hurts. See, you go at an angle. See how I did that? Where that wood is, you didn't go at an angle. Now you want to pull this piece down. See, there you go. There's a piece right here still. Hold the door frame. You want to cut that out as well. Because you want to put the sheetrock in there right here too. There we go. That's about it. Now I got my hoe for my sheetrock. Now I got some nails all up in here. They didn't use sheetrock, they used nails. So I have to run and get a hammer, pull them out. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I'm ready to cut the hole for that, for this slight cover. <coughs> I messed up that piece, it broke and it fell. But it's no problem. You go eight. That's two, four, six, eight and seven eighths center this way. If in here this way, we got uh, five and a, let's say five and a half center. Five and a half center this way as well. So what you want to do is get your template and put it on there. And do your seven, seven eighths, five and a half marking down here. Like so, like I did. Got my seven, seven eighths, five and a half. That's center, because that's light. So I put this cover over it to make the circle. But this cover, the circle has to be a little smaller than this. So I'm gonna try to stay, let's say a good half. The dimension of here to here, we got. You got five and a So I want my circle five and a half uh, inside here. Five and a half in a circle. So now I'm gonna get my little marking five and a half circle because I could cut it. Because it could fit up there nice. So uh, I'll get back to you in a minute. Ooh. All right. I lift my leg over the ladder. I'm using it for a table. <laughs> okay, I'm back, making a video. <laughs> okay, I'm back. You can use this to make your cut if you don't have a road of zip, but I, I have one. So, cut out my circle. Oh, 
believe that's good enough. We'll find out in a second, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest of that sheet rock off off up here in this corner area against a brick because I can slide this through. Damn, I'm gonna screw it. So what you what, what you can do is is uh, is mark it where, where the wood is. Like right here, right here. That's how wide the wood is, all the way down, because where you put your screws. Then you can mark, put a little mark here, a little mark here to do that. And you can put a mark here, mark here, because you can know where to put the screws. And you can also use your tape measure. Okay, let's say. One and a half center. So you know one and a half center for this line, one and a half center. This way we can go. One and a half center. Then we got another one here. So we have to put a mark for that beam as well. Here. Here. Okay. And that one is two and three quarters. So I'll put two and three quarters, two and three quarters there, one and a half center here, because you know, and one and a half center here. Then you know where to put your screws. So I'll be with you in a minute. I'll clean it up and get it ready for the sheetrock. Bear with me. Okay, the hole's cut. <coughs> I put two screws up there. So now you just put all your screws in. You want to go about a sixteenth in past, not too far, but a sixteenth in past your sheet rock. Because you don't want your screws showing when you start mudding. Put your joint compound on. See how I'm going in? I'm going in about a sixteenth. Then you fill them up as well with the joint compound. And sometimes you miss a spot. <laughs> so. screws in there. Put a couple this way as well. It's the wood. So, oh, what's going on? There's a beam all the way down here. And I got a marked right here showing it. That's rush right there. I'm gonna try a little more this way. Nope. Uh oh. Something's wrong. What the hell's my bean? There we go. Jeez. Big hole, but no problem. None, none sheet rock have fixed the mud. I mean, so you have to be careful not to do that. Oh man, I dropped my screwdriver bit. Fell out. Beam goes at that kind of little angle, it's messing me up. 
the whole thing. It's time to mud it. Clean a little bit off my circle here. Put that light cover. Yep. Perfect. Now we get the joint compound ready. I would. Uh, I'm gonna use the fast drying stuff on this. So I need to get some water. I'll be back with you. Hi. Okay, I'm back. Now we're at the mudding stage or joint compound stage. What you want to do? Is you just put it all over. You just follow the line. You just follow the line. See? Just put it all on there. I'm using the, the fast dry compound, joint compound. Or I like to call it mud. Now I'm going to let it all dry. It takes about five minutes or so. It's winter time. It's a little chilly out here. It's like maybe 48 degrees. But Normally in the summertime when it's 90 degrees when you're doing this, dry my cat. But it's winter, so February 13th. So I'm gonna let it dry. See, it's still wet. If it was summer 90 degrees, it would have been dry already. I promise you. So oh, whoop, I found the screw hole. Found the screw hole and it's right here. Another screw hole right here. So you do all the screw holes. Make sure there's no screw holes showing. See right here. That's where I punched it with the drill. Went too far through. Went too through. Too far through. Made a a hole big as a dime. <laughs> No good at all. So you have to be careful when you're drilling, putting your screws in. It happens. No big deal. Because that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do is um, fill it with some joint compound. I'm going to make some more joint compound to get these little high areas right here. So I can blend it in real nice for when I sand it. So I'll get back to you in a second. I'm gonna make some more joint compound. Okay, I'm back. Made some more. It's, it's just like making a mas masa for bread or you know, you don't want it that thick though, not like bread. But This time I made it a little watery. <laughs> you don't want to make too much of this fast drying stuff because if you don't use it all within a certain time, like a couple, if you don't use it within two or three minutes, it gets so hard like a rock and all that one you made goes to waste. Well, I made it too watery. No big deal. What you do is just add a little bit more. The powder stuff. See, I had some more pat powder. It was too watery. See, you want to bob like that. See, bob like that. Now you put it, you spread it on again. So I got me some high and low points on this ceiling here. So the way you fix that is add some 
joint compound to the mix. See, like so. Just follow that line that you made earlier. That's all you do. It's that easy. See, I just follow the line. I put this on the slide thing to make sure it fit it before I put all this on in case if I messed up somehow I had to cut a whole new piece. You can't cut a whole new piece after you have this all mudded. <laughs> that defeats the purpose. So see it nice and neat. I love it. Yes I do. Okay, I'm done. All the holes are, everything is done. All the screw holes are gone. That's good. Now, now I could take a 10, 15 minute break, let it dry. Cause you want it dry. before you start sanding. So you want to feather it out like that on both sheets because you want to get rid of any like low, low spots. Sometimes you get a spot higher than higher than other and you have a little gap, you know, like a 30 second showing of th this side and this side's too high up. It's because how these beams are sometimes after all these old houses, you know. So, so you have to feather it out on both sides of the sheet rocks. That's it. I can take this back down because it don't need to be up, be up there because I'm going to be sanding. Sanding and painting, this will just be in the way. So take this back off. So pretty soon I'll sand it down. After I sand it down, I paint it. Then caulk, caulk the edge right here with some caulking. And I'm done. Good to go. Go eat lunch. <laughs> go do something. I'll, I'll be back when it's time to sand. I'm gonna go take a break. Okay. After it dries, uh, compound, joint compound. What you wanna do is just sand it back and forth all the way across your line. I sanded it a little bit before I turned it back on. But I'll tell you to do is this go back and forth like this all the way. All the way, you know, this way, all the way, this way. Back and forth. It's 
done sanded. It's all done. It's nice and sanded. So, after you're done sanding, so when you're done sanding, you gotta go ahead and paint it. But there's no air right here. It's not plush, I mean, real pretty and plush. I can see like a little bump there. You don't want no bumps at all. Because when you paint it, people will see it. So, where did my sandpaper go? I swore I threw it on the ground right here. Well, I got this little piece, but where did it go? I'm sorry about this. Well, anyway, hopefully this will do it. It's not that much. Back and forth. You want it nice and flat all the way across. It looks like one piece. It looks like one piece, not two pieces. I broke mine this morning when I was loading the truck up. They fell on my bag and I stepped on them. <coughs> and I live five miles from Home Depot. And I was supposed to be here at 9.30. If I probably went to Home Depot, I would have got here, let's say, almost 11, probably. <laughs> so, uh, I'm taking my chance. Uh, not getting none in my eye. Then you want to get a rag and clean the area real good. A damp, a damp rag. You just want to get all that sanding dust off for paint. See? Paper. I swore I threw it right here on the ground. And it's nowhere to be seen. Oh, here it is. No. That is totally weird. Or did I throw it away over here? Nope. I just don't understand what happened to it. It's nowhere here. Let me see this part. Needs a little sanding. Because if you got any little gaps in there, in your compound, buddy, your mud, it'll show. When you paint, when you paint, you'll see like a little concave, you know, inside your, uh, your, your compound, buddy, or mud. Uh, so you want it. Sand it pretty good. Where it's all flush. Looks like one piece. Nice. That's what I want. This uh, she rock here, where uh, the slight thing is right here.
Look, look what I find now. I looked, I looked in that spot three times. That's weird. I found the best spot here I need to stand. Like I said, you want it to look like one piece instead of two pieces. That's why you have to feather it out. Sweating. Mm. Sweat, sweat. where I sand it right here put too much I went the wrong way because I put the grooves so you want to avoid that putting grooves in that deep grooves you want it smooth smooth Okay, that's it. Just paint it, put the light cover back on, boom. She's done. That's all there is to it. So please visit vhillshandmanservices.com if you want to see some different videos like plumbing. Uh, I'm going to have some electric, electrical ones coming out soon to help you on that as well. Uh, so I appreciate you taking your time watching this video. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.